In this project, you're going to implement a game of tic-tac-toe. We include two separate starter files, GUI.RKT and P0.RKT. You write your solution code in P0.RKT, and then you run GUI.RKT when you're done. You can also, of course, run the test at any time using Python tester.py, although make sure to reuse the right version of Python, namely Python 3, for everything in this course. One of the most exciting things about tic-tac-toe for you as a student is that it's a game with a perfect strategy that has a simple recursive solution when you implement it right. All right, so now let's poke around with what we've got in the auto grader. So I just cloned this project and I walked through it a little bit. So I've got some files that you won't necessarily have, but the main ones we've got here are this uh, GUI.RKT. That's the GUI file. And we've got P0.RKT along with tester.py. Uh, now, the TA released a note that saying that there might be an updated version of tester.py, so if that's not working for you, please go check Slack uh, and ask Chang about that. All right, um, so let's see what we've got. If I cat uh, p0.rkt, I've just got the functions I have to execute, and there's a little helper utility function right here as well. All right, and then if I go and cat uh, gui.rkt, I can see if I read the very top, it's just telling me, uh, I can see if I read the very top, it's just telling me that you don't have to modify this file. You can read through it and see how it works if you want to. It's, uh, it's using some pretty advanced racket programming, so I don't expect you to get everything in this. Uh, but if you're interested in knowing what it's doing, please reach out to me and we can talk about it. But you absolutely don't have to understand what's, uh, what's here in this file. All right, so let's see what actually happens when you implement this project correctly. So I'm going to take the, uh, the TA solution and uh, copy it in for my implementation. And then I'm going to run uh, racket GUI.RKT. In my case, I have to fix my shell. And by default, it's going to pop up a 3x3 three three grid where I can play the game. So I can start playing the game here. And then I can see the winner here in this game is X. And then I can click to exit. All right, that's what happens if I have all the functions implemented correctly, right? Until you actually scaffold those out, you can run Python 3 tester.py, and then you can run all the tests. All right, so I'm running all these tests here. I can see 14 out of 14 tests pass. All right, so I'm going to do a uh, git status, and I'm gonna see I need to check in P0. I'll do a git commit. And I need to do a git config. All right, so now I'm going to git add this, and then I'm going to git commit, say adding P0. And now I'm going to git push. Okay, and it's saying it's uh, it's due in three months. All right, so I've got quite a bit of time. I'm gonna assume you've read through readme.md. This is the project specification where I outline precisely what you have to do, but let's go through the finer points together right now. So you're gonna implement uh, five or six different functions. These five functions, the first five, are gonna be required uh, for everyone. Uh, to get a minimally satisfactory grade, you're gonna have to implement these first five functions, board huh, next move, valid move huh, make move, and winner ha. Huh? You're gonna to have to implement those for three by three games of tic-tac-toe. And if you wanna get a satisfactory grade, you're gonna to have to implement them for in by in games of tic-tac-toe. So not just three by three, you'll have to consider the arbitrary in by in case. To get an excellent score on the project, you're also going to have to implement a computer enemy AI. In this function, choose next move. Its input is a board and you give back a pair of the move that the AI is going to make. This actually all plugs into the GUI interface that I'll show in a second. So eventually you'll be able to play your AI if you do things correctly. All right, so this project assumes that you know basic programming with lists and recursion and racket. So functions you might wanna use are things like car, cutter, cons, append. You might wanna consider using the uh, control constructs if and cons, along with recursion and uh, the logical operations and an or. Our solution uses roughly the following functions and forms, car, cutter, and, or, equal, ha, null, ha, if, and cons, along with some other ones. So I've also included in the starter code this function count. It accepts a lambda and counts how many elements of a list satisfy that lambda. 
And you should absolutely use that function. That's going to help your implementation out quite a bit. All right, so how is tic-tac-toe actually going to be performed in this project? So a tic-tac-toe board, you can draw kind of like this. So we've got some X's and we've got some O's. And in this case, nobody wins this game because there's nobody who's got either an entire row or an entire column, all right? So if we had, for example, if we had X right here, this would be a win for uh, player X, all right? But also we could never get this board. This would be invalid because we've got a lot more X's than we've got O's. So this could never actually happen in practice. So in fact, this is an example of a board that is a tie. Now, you can prove that tic-tac-toe is always a tie. There's a perfect strategy that if you're an AI, you can always at least tie your opponent. Now, we're going to represent board games as n by n lists in Racket. Those lists are going to contain symbols. And those symbols are either going to be the symbol uppercase E, uppercase X, or uppercase O. An E is for an empty cell, X is for a mark with the player X, and O is for a mark with the player O. All right, so for example, this list of nine E's, nine symbol E's, represents the empty three by three board. We assume that boards are always n by n, so they have to be square. Now let's consider what a board with an X in the middle looks like. So I've got this board here, there's an X in the middle, and that would be represented by this list here. And notice that it's in row major format. So what I mean by that is that we're storing things according to their row first, and then their column. So if we want to look up this X right here, it's in row two, or sorry, it's in row one indexing, but zero. It's run row one in column one. So we would go to, this is row one, and then column one within that is this X right here. All right, so you're gonna implement uh, a few of these different functions in Racket. The first function you're gonna implement is board hop. And this just determines if a board is valid. We say that a board is valid so remember, a board is, has to be a list, and has to contain only the symbols x, o, and e. Its length has to be the square of some integer. The number of x's and o's differs by at most one. And also, we assume that x moves first. So that means if you have an empty board with only one move, it has to be x. Recall that the uh, racket predicates, that's just a name that means functions that either return true or false. So this function, board high, it's a predicate, that means it returns either the true or false. All right, so next up, we've got this player next move. This calculates which player is gonna move next. So for example, on this board right here, we've got uh, X, but we don't have any O's yet. So O is gonna be the next move. All right, you can assume that your function satisfies board ha. Huh? So you don't have to handle the cases where the input is not board ha. Huh? Our next function is valid move. Now note there's actually a little bit of a typo. This should say uh, player is either X or O. Valid move takes a board a row and a column and then a player and says whether it's valid for a player to make that move. So for example, you, a player can't make a move where there's already a square placed. So if X already has a square at one, one, they can't take that square again, or they can't take O's squares either. They can only take cells that are empty. That's what, uh, that's what this function is checking. All right. The next function is make move that just accepts a board, a row, a column, and then a player. And it produces an updated board. So if I give you this board right here that only has uh, an X in the center, and then I tell you to place a move at zero, zero for O, you'll update it so that now it's got O as the first cell right here. All right, the next function is uh, winner, ha, huh? which accepts a board and returns either the symbol X, the symbol O, or false. If the winner is X, you're going to return the symbol X. If the winner is O, you're going to return the symbol O. And if neither is the winner, you're going to return the symbol or you're going to return false. If you want to get the excellent mark on the project, you also have to implement a function calculate next move. It accepts a board and a player. And this function implements a computer enemy AI. So this will calculate the next move you should make. It returns a con cell of an X and a Y coordinate that should be the next move you should make on the board. Now, because this is the excellent mark, this is a little bit more open-ended uh, than the previous ones. And in fact, we're not giving out tests for it. We're assuming that if you want to uh, implement this part, you're going to set up a time to grade it with the uh, TAs or, or myself. Now, I'd also like to announce one fun social thing I have planned for the course. A few weeks from now, I haven't decided precisely when, but you'll hear about it more over Slack. 
I'm going to solicit a few students to get their solutions to this excellent mark. And we're going to have an in-class demo where we run the AIs against each other and see if any of them can beat any of the others. Assuming that everybody implemented their AI correctly, meaning they'll get the excellent mark, they will, uh, we won't be able to find any clear winners. So we'll hope that everybody ends in a draw. I'd also like to say, uh, for your participating in this challenge, we'll give you two participation points if you subject yourself to, uh, to challenging another student's AI in class. All right, now I'd like to spend a few moments discussing how you can code up this enemy AI for the excellent part of the project. So I've got this board scaffolded up right here where we've got the X's in the top left and we've got the O's in the middle. Now here's what you're going to do as a player. You're always going to try to maximize your outcome, assuming that other players are always responding to their your moves in the best way for them. So you're kind of assuming that other players, they're making their best move at any one point in the game. You're going to make your best move too. So in this case, for X, there's an obvious best move. It would be best to just go here because then you could win the game. There wouldn't be any other move that O could perform. And so for that reason, going to this point and winning the game is always the best strategy because there's no possible response from O. All right, let's try this again. All right, so let's say that we hadn't taken the optimal path for X. Instead, we'd done something more like this. Well, now let's consider what is O gonna do in this situation? Well, O has to minimize the bad outcome for themselves. They have to choose the situation in which they can end up best. Now, how are they going to end up best? What happens if they go over here? Well, then X can always go and win the game. So clearly we don't want to do that. Clearly we want to at least not lose. So let's play this again as O and see what we're going to do. Set up the game. All right, so now we're assuming X goes here. What is O going to do? Well, O is going to block X from winning there, but X can still win here. So there's really not a good solution to this problem. So in sum, this is just kind of a losing position for O because there would always be a way that X could win no matter what they did. But let's assume they didn't. Let's just go O right here. And then let's say that X went right here. Well, now what would O's best move be? Well, their mess move would be to go up here and actually win the game. All right, so hopefully that gives you some intuition for how you might try to play this game and how you might implement it. One thing I'll kind of say is think about how you might actually code this up. What would it mean to consider all the different possible paths that you might take? I'll give you a hint. You can always use this make move function along with valid move to check whether a move is valid and then update the move and then pass that into the recursive function call to update the board. That's kind of the rough start for how your code should look. And if you start doing that and then thinking about how you could produce, for example, integer weights that would come back out as the result of various different situations, I think you'll be on a pretty good path towards having a pretty nice looking solution. At least that's the way that I would code this up. Another thing you might do is you might just call valid move on all the different squares. And then you might actually consider what might happen if you made the move. How would you then consider what your opponent might do? Well, you're definitely going to have to use recursion for this one because in some situations you're going to have to fan out to consider multiple possible moves as a response. And I think that's what's going to make this project fun most of all. Now, I guess I'll wrap up by saying you can also pass in this flag dash K that accepts a command line parameter uh, specifying the dimension of the board. Although I guess five dimensional tic-tac-toe would be pretty cool. Um, I would give you extra participation points if you could make that one work out, especially if you could visualize it. Um, but I think this is going to be a pretty fun thing, especially when we start doing these uh, student contests where we have the AIs play against each other in really high dimension or really high sizes and see whose AI can kind of scale to it. All right, so that's uh, the first project in the class. It's an automated version of tic-tac-toe. And I think you're really going to enjoy it. It was definitely fun to code up on my end. So good luck with it and uh, reach out on Slack if you have any issues. All right.